cold. <clears throat> I'm not at my best, so forgive me. Hope everybody's okay, and love to everybody out there. So let's turn to Psalm 24. Psalm 24 in the Word of God. <coughs> Excuse me. Psalm Okay, let's come before the Lord. Father God, we come before you today and we <coughs> confess our sin and our failure and our weakness, dear God. We acknowledge that you are our God today. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Father, we thank you for your love, your greatness, your majesty, your power. We give you the praise and the honor today. In your name and for your glory, we pray that you bless this message in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Sorry, I'm not at my best today, but... Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein, for he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that have a clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. The King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts he is the King of glory, Selah. Lift up your head, for your victory is here. Have you suffered a lot these last few years? If, if the video stops, then I'm just going to keep going. So forgive me if my body stops or whatever. <clears throat> it's just a bad connection. <clears throat> Have you entered a new year? You decided to go forward for God. But there is a dark cloud still hanging over you this year. Maybe it's regret. Maybe mistakes that you have made in the past have dog you, keep dogging you today. Maybe it's the people of the past. Maybe people's opinion of you continue to follow you today. Or pessimistic. You're pessimistic about the future because the past was tough and difficult. And you're thinking maybe this year it's going to be tough and difficult again. And it's going to be the same old story again. Let us turn to Psalm 22, 6 to 18. I've shared this before and I'm going to share it again. But 
verse 6 to 18. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised of the people. All they that see me laugh to me scorn. They shoot out the lips. They shake their head, saying, He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighteth in him. But thou art he that took me out of the womb, and thou didst make me hope. The womb, and thou didst make me hope. When I was upon my mother's breast, I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God for my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me, strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, <coughs> and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws, and thou hast brought me into the dust of death. The dogs have compassed me, and the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I may tell of my bones, they too can stir upon me, and they part my garments among them, and cast lots upon my vesture. But be not thou far from me, O Lord, O my strength, Ace thee to help me. Psalm 24 can be looked at in conjunction with Psalm 22 and 23. In Psalm 22, we see the suffering Savior. In Psalm 22, we see the shepherd Savior. And in Psalm 24, we see the glorified Savior. But Psalm 22 <coughs> is a prophecy of the Messiah's suffering on the cross. Our Lord was stripped of all his dignity. Maybe last year you were stripped with all your dignity. Maybe you had everything stripped away from you. You felt desolate. You felt stripped. I want to tell you today that Jesus Christ was stripped of his dignity. That Christ died on a cross and was crowned with a crown of thorns on his head. And he had no dignity. He said in this psalm that they cast lots for his garments in the old ancient world the outer garment was seen as a very important piece of clothing if you were to go to bed at night you use your outer garment as a cover when you died you made that people uh, your friends or people who knew you made sure that your garment was given to the family because it was an important family heirloom when our lord died he said the soldiers cast lots for his garments. He didn't even have any dignity, even with his garments. They didn't give his garment to his mother. <coughs> they just cast lots for his garment. Our Lord went through humiliation. He had no dignity. You've gone on a long journey and you might feel humiliated. You might feel that you've got no dignity. But I want to tell you this, that the Lord has been there. The Lord knows exactly what you've gone through. He knows the struggles. He knows the suffering. And he understands. You're not alone, my friend. Then if you turn to Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lie in pastures. He lead us beside beside the still waters you might say well Jason I not only suffered but I, I made mistakes I, I, I sinned and I and, and I don't really think that God would ever forgive me and you know something that is a problem with most Christians believe deep down they're not forgiven they might think they're forgiven generally speaking but deep deep down they don't really feel forgiven the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He make me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. <coughs> he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. <coughs> he do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anoints my head with oil. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
any sin that you ever done if you come under the blood of Christ you are forgiven you're forgiven you're cleansed you're washed so don't let a past sin pull you down now don't let that cloud of the past pull you down now God's love is vast and great it says oh the deep deep love of Jesus vast unmeasured boundless free rolling as a mighty ocean in its fullness over me God's love and salvation is blood covers your sin today however much you failed if you repent and come to Jesus and ask him for to forgive you he will cleanse you wash you you are restored today you know the joy of the Lord today you are clean you are forgiven you are washed in the blood of the lamb so stand tall as a child of God and stop feeling condemned today live in the joy of the Lord that he's done for you today he, the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin and you are forgiven you are washed you are clean today so do not go back to feeling as if you are condemned because you're not condemned if you come under the blood of Christ you are washed and you are clean I'll say it again you are washed and you are clean in the blood of Christ yes you are yes you are so come under his blood and rejoice today you are a forgiven Lord redeemed sinner today in the blood of Christ and don't you forget it my sermon today has three points number one lift up your head the king is your creator God number two lift up your head your king demands a pure heart and number three lift up your head your king will fight for you and give you an awesome victory and we're looking at Psalm 24 Psalm 24 <coughs> excuse me Psalm 24 <coughs> excuse me somebody in your life has been controlling and manipulating you an individual has controlled and contrived and you and part of the way they manipulated you is by negative words they controlled you by saying things that were not nice about you and it manipulated you and it controlled you turn to Psalm 24 verse 1 to 2 the Lord the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein for he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods this person who manipulated you hurt you you need to realize this that they don't own you but God owns everything they don't own you but God owns everything God owns the fishes in the sea he owns the whales he owns the birds he owns the trees he owns Owns, he owns you and he owns them so when this person is manipulating you with negativity remember how great God is remember the majesty of God remember that your God is a creator God that he owns everything the problem with you today is that you don't realize how great your God is and God's going to do a new thing today, give you a new victory, give you new hope, give you new joy today. Today is going to be a day that is never going to be the same for you again. You are going to have a marvelous victory today in your life. And part of the lesson of your victory is this, because you've learned the lesson that God is greater than your detractors. God is greater than those who would be negative towards you, than those who have a negative opinion of you. God is greater than them and now to learn in a way that you've never learned it before <coughs> let's turn to John chapter 1 verse 3 
John chapter 1 verse 3. John chapter 1 verse 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. This is a God who created everything. Colossians chapter 1 16. Colossians chapter 1 verse 16. If you have a Bible, get a Bible. Colossians chapter 1 verse 16. By him all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers or things were created by him and for him. Christ created everything that you see around you today. Psalm 104, 24. Psalm 104, Psalm 104. If you have a Bible, get a Bible. Psalm 104, verse 24. <clears throat> o Lord, how manifold, manifold are thy works. In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. This is your God. God is a creator. God, he created everything. It's all for him. He did it. Psalm 50, verse 10. Psalm 50, verse 10. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. God created everything. God owns everything. God is above everything. So when you're going through it, and when that person is being... When that group of people are being negative towards you, you need to look at how great God is, how he is above them, mighty in power, mighty in glory, and he is a great God over your enemies. Now, if you'd like to turn to Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, 25. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. You got a Bible, get your Bibles. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Just in a little aside for those who believe in evolution today, there is no evidence for evolution. The Bible clearly teaches that God created the world. We can see design within creation. You can see it all around. The we've evolved is the greatest myth making ever known in the history of humanity it is pure myth making to believe in evolution and if you're a christian today and you've been influenced by evolution and you kind of got this rhetoric and propaganda saying that it's oh it's them it's the it's them fundamentalist they're fundamentalist and they don't really use their brains and they don't really understand let me tell you something the only fundamentalist here are the evolutionists. They are the fundamentalists. They are blind and refuse to look at the hard facts and evidence. And I would encourage you to look at the hard evidence. And you will find that mutations and natural selection cannot produce the variety of species that we see around us today. No matter how many billions of years you want to put into the computation, it just doesn't add up. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, 34. Matthew 6, 25, 24. And if there are scholars out there of the biological school with your PhDs and you come along to the Christian and say, oh, the Christians who believe that creation, God created the world <coughs> in six days. Well, they're fundamentalists. We're scholars of the biological school. We're, we're great scholars and we look at things in context and we're more educated than these fundamentalists. I want to tell you something. Your sophisticated hermeneutical tools are only going to send people to hell. The only hermeneutical tool you need is the Bible and what the Bible says about itself and the Holy Spirit. People just need to get into the Word of God and study it in its context and study it with the power of the Holy Spirit. And they will know what the Bible teaches. Your sophisticated hermeneutical tools, there'll be more people in, the, in hell with your sophisticated hermeneutical tools. Then you could even begin to dream. Mr. Biologos scholar, 
is and Mrs. Biologo Scholar is you're proud. You want to be an academic, famous in the academic world. You want to have the trappings of being respected as an academic. Let me ask you something, Mrs. and Mr. Academic. What was our Lord Jesus Christ? He was on a cross, humiliated, broken. What does Paul say? We preach Christ crucified. In the academic world, if you follow Christ, you will never have a reputation. Our Lord never had a reputation. Never had a reputation. Yet you want a reputation with your PhD? And want to be a big time scholar? And tell everybody that God used evolution and the Bible together? Well, you are a reputation. Because my Lord had no reputation. The Apostle Paul had no reputation. We who preach Christ crucified will have no reputation. But we do not depend on the arm of flesh. We depend on the arm of God. I'm not against scholarship. I believe in good scholarship. Don't make scholarship an idol. Repent and turn away from evolution and come back to the Bible. Come back to the cross. If you turn to Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body more than the raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heaven are you not much better than they. Which of you, by taking thought, can add a, a cubit unto his stature? Why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today and tomorrow is cast into the oven, Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying what we eat or what we drink, or wherein shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. <coughs> Excuse me. For your heavenly Father. <coughs> Excuse me. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. I tell no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the thing of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. God will meet your need. He is a creator God. He owns everything. And you in your marriage are struggling financially, wondering whether you will make it financially. I want to say to you, if you put God first and live for God, God will meet your need financially. He will supply your need. And if you're a single mom or a single parent today and you're struggling and wondering how you can get by today financially, I want to tell you that your God is a God who loves you. Your God is going to supply your need. He's going to meet your need because he is a great, compassionate and good God. You put him first in your family as a single mom or a single parent and God will is a tender God and he knows your need and he'll be there for you my friend number two lift your head your king demands a pure heart lift your head your king demands a pure heart <coughs> you probably know the name I can't remember the name but maybe you can remember the name but in Australia there was a man who wore <coughs> who wore khaki clothes and he would capture crocodiles either for to put in a zoo or to do uh, scientific studies on <coughs> and this man had blonde hair a very uh, vibrant personality and he died a few years ago one day he went to capture a crocodile and the crocodile grabbed him, pulled him into the water, tossed him to and fro and sadly killed him. 
that reminds us of sin that sin is like a crocodile that when the crocodile gets hold of you it will pull you under when sin gets hold of you it will pull you under <coughs> psalm 24 4 and 5 <coughs> starting from verse 3 who shall ascend into the hill of the lord who shall stand in his holy place he that hath clean hands and a pure heart who had not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully he shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Amen. You're going to have a good year this year. It's going to be a real year because you've learned that God is great and bigger than your detractors. But number two, you've learned a lesson and the lesson is going to hit on to you today. And that lesson is this, that you can't play around with sin. You've played around with sin. You've played around with it, even little sins. But little sins are like a crocodile that will pull you under, like a bow constrictor that will tear you and strangle you to death. You cannot play around with little sin, never mind big sin, without it destroying your life. And you've learned the lesson today that you need a pure heart. You need a pure heart. You need clean hands. You need to do it for God's glory, it says, those who are not vain, look. He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, verse 4, un, who had not lifted up his soul, what? Unto vanity. You've learned the lesson that it's not about you, it's about his glory. The reason why this year is going to be a good year for you, you've come to the realization, not only do you need a clean heart, not only do you need clean hands, you also need to do it for God's glory. And it says, nor sworn deceitfully, you know you've got to be straight, true, and right in the way you deal with people. And you've learned those lessons that you can't play around with sin. You can't allow things to come in and impurify your heart. You can't come in and allow your hands to get dirty. You can't come in and start thinking about self anymore. And you can't come in and start twisting things anymore. <clears throat> we turn to Romans 13 verse 11 to 14 Romans chapter 13 verse 11 to 14 Romans chapter 13 Romans 13 verse 11 to 14 and that knowing the time that now is nigh high time to awake out of sleep but now is our salvation nearer than when we believed the night is far spent the day is at hand let us therefore cast off the works of what the works of what the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light let us walk honestly as the day not in rioting and drunkenness not in chambering and wantonness not in strife and envying but put ye on the lord jesus christ and what make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof a pure heart chapter 7 and 11 1 peter chapter 4 verse 7 and 11 now i want to say this at the beginning of this message I talked about the love of God and how he will forgive you. But here we have to talk about the standards of God and how God expects high standards. 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7 and 11. <clears throat> but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another, towards another without grudging. As every man have received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So he's talking about be sober, be fervent in love, be hospitable. Show the love of God to one another. 
I just want to say this. The, the Bible teaches high standards about holiness, but I want to just say a little thing which is really, really important, and that is this. The idea that you're perfect, that you're walking around thinking you're perfect, all you're doing is pretending. You are a Pharisee. If you're going around pretending that your marriage is all okay, you're going around pretending that you're okay and everything's fine, you're the Pharisee. Because I tell you this, most people, most Christians have an issue in their life that's never been dealt with or not being dealt with. So let's be honest, dear. Let's not pretend you're not perfect and stop pretending that you are perfect because you're not perfect. Your marriage ain't perfect and you're not perfect. So be honest about it. Because if you're not honest about it, all you're doing is creating Phariseeism in your church and in your life. The reality is that we struggle. All of us struggle. And we should be honest about it. But even though we struggle, we do not live in the struggle. There is a movement towards what God wants us to do and to live in a way that God wants us. He has set the standard and we got to go for that standard. And that standard is to live a pure life with a pure heart. <coughs> and there is no compromise. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. <clears throat> it's going to be a good year for you this is going to be the best year of your life do you know why it's going to be the best year of your life because today god has brought you to a realization that you can't play around with sin anymore like you used to you can't dabble with sin you can't dabble with a little bit of sin no 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 you can't dabble with sin You've got to have a pure heart. If you don't have a pure heart, God is a holy God. And he is a holy purge you of your sin. He might be patient with you for many, many years because of your little sins and your big sins. He might be patient with you. But there come a time when God will bring you to a realization that these sins were wrong and they had to be dealt with. And they will spoil your ministry. They will spoil your life. God turns it around and he can make something out of it. But there will be wasted opportunity, wasted time, wasted things that you could have redeemed if you'd have been living and purging yourself away from the big and the little sins in your life. My friend. God wants you to live with a pure heart this year. And if you live with a pure heart, this year will be a bumper year for you. If you've ever had in your life. So take sin seriously and cut the sin out. Cut it out. Cut it out. <coughs> Okay, third point, lift up your head for your king will fight for you and give you an awesome victory. You've needed a breakthrough for a long, long time. You've been praying for a breakthrough for a long, long time. You've been crying and crying and crying and weeping. And asking God to give you a breakthrough and it's not come. And you've longed for that breakthrough. You've not come. You broke your heart over it and it's not come. And I want to tell you something today. 
that God is saying to you, he has heard your cry and it has come today. Your victory that you've always wanted is come today. Psalm 24, verse 6 and 10. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. See, I lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. <clears throat> Who is the king of glory? <clears throat> the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come come in who is of glory the lord of hosts he is the king of glory see that god wants you to know today that he is the king of glory and right now he says to you he's coming in and he is giving you that victory that you've always wanted if you turn to isaiah 60 verse 1 isaiah 60 verse 1 Arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. The glory of the Lord has come upon thee today. You are walking in the glory of God today. That is the favor of God is on you today in your life. Let's turn to Psalm 31. Psalm 31. Psalm 31. <clears throat> Psalm 31, <coughs> excuse me. Psalm 31, reading from verse 16. Make thy face to shine upon the servant. Save me from thy mercy's sake. Let me not be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon thee. Let the wicked be ashamed and let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lips be put to silence, which speak grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man, and thou shalt keep them secretly in the pavilion from strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has showed me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. For I said in my haste, I am cut off, from before thy enemies nevertheless thou heardest the voice of my supplications when i cried unto thee O oh, love the lord all ye his saints for the lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart ye that hope in the lord be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart all ye that hope in the lord you have been battling away you've been struggling for year upon year upon year whatever that struggle has been it's been a hard tough slog day upon day and night upon night you have wondered where is the deliverance coming from <coughs> you have cried you have wept and you've gone to God and you've said, Lord, where are you? Some days and weeks and months and years you've wondered there is no hope. There will be no hope. There will be no way forward. It has been gone. I have been lost. I have been. There is no hope. And you've gone on and on and on and on. And God says to you today, the king of glory comes in and tells you today that he is fighting for you, that he has given you the battle today. You are a winner today in the name of Jesus Christ. No more condemnation. No more anymore where you feel you have lost the battle today. You are a winner in Christ. He gives you the battle. He has won the battle for you today. Whatever it was, it is gone. It is taken away. And God gives you the victory today. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. Comes to you today. Gives you a victory today. God tells you today, he's taking it away. 
that thing that pulled you down that battle that you fought for many a year has now been won and it's been won by God he's given it to you as a gift as a gracious loving gift he has bestowed it upon you today he has given all that you could ever ask or dream and he has given it to you today my friend he has given you your heart's desire today and all that you've ever wanted today he has given it to you the king of glory has come in he is mighty in battle he is the lord of hosts and he comes in today and tells you that you the battle and you have won today <coughs> Excuse me. So the question is, well, wait a minute. I suffered greatly. Jason, I suffered greatly. Why did I have to go through that valley? Why, why did I have to go through that pain? Why did I have to have those tears? Why did I go through it all? Why? Jay. No one will ever know what I went through. Why did I have to go through all that I went through, Jason? Psalm 24, verse 6. This is the generation of them that seek him, to seek thy face. Oh, what? Jacob, Selah. Hebrew is ponder and think. Oh, Jacob. One of the things that stands out for me about Jacob is that he limped. And you know why he limped. He limped because he wrestled with God, did he not? When he wrestled with God, God met with him in a powerful way and he was never the same again. Because he knew he couldn't go any further anymore unless he was dependent upon God and not his own flesh. And today, you have been given a great victory by God, but today you walk with a limp like Jacob. Because what you have learned today, now that God is victorious, that all who you are and nothing that all your wisdom and all your ability is nothing all the arm of flesh is nothing all that man can do for you is nothing that any blessing that comes your way any goodness that comes your way it is all of god not of man so now you walk with a limp so when people say to her, say about you oh look at him look at her how blessed she is you know that that blessing didn't come by your own ability. You know that that blessing did not come by you. That it came by the will and the goodness and kindness and the might and love and greatness of God. And you walk with a limp. Because you walk with humility knowing that every blessing that has come your way has come because of God, not of you. These years, you've come to learn the lesson of humility you've come to learn that you are nothing that you are a nobody that you should should not have pride and think that you are something think that you are better than anybody else or that god owes you or that you can do it in your own strength in your own ability or that men will help you and that you will have respect and honor and all the rest of it and you come to realize that that is all dung. It is all of the earth. It is all of flesh. It is all of man. It is not of God. And you've come to realize that all you held sacred was dung and flesh and was not of God. And you've come to realize that now all you want is God's glory. All you want is to receive what God wants for you to depend upon to serve God, to honor God. It's all about God, not you anymore. 
And you've come to realize that. And so now you walk with a limp. You walk with a limp. Because you've learned the hard way that you're nothing and he's everything. And any blessing that comes your way is because of him. Second, the second lesson that you can learn is Jonah chapter 2 verse 10. And we come to an end near the end. Jonah chapter 2 verse 10. Jonah chapter 2 verse 10. verse 10 Jonah was a rebellious prophet he'd gone off and done his own thing and wouldn't listen to God God got a whale to swallow him and then Jonah realized he was a sinner realized he'd not gone the right way and then he repented and as he repented it says this in Jonah chapter 2 verse 10 and the Lord spoke unto the fish and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land and the Lord spoke unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. God, in his time, spat out Jonah. And you know, the lesson that you learn is this, that God lifts up and he pulls down, he pulls down and he lifts up. God blesses and God takes away, God takes away and God blesses. That only in his time will you know his victory. Because it's by his might and his strength. Nebuchadnezzar had a lot of pride. He was a great emperor of the ancient world. <coughs> and he looked upon his kingdom. And he said, how great I am. Look at all my kingdom. Look at my empire. How great and how powerful am I? And do you know what God said? You think you did? God made him go mad. Suddenly, as he was boasting on his rooftop, God sent a madness upon him and he was mad. And he became crazy. And his hands began to grow nails. And his hair grew. And he was crazy. And he went crazy. For so many years. And he lost everything. He lost his empire. He lost everything. He had no dignity. He had nothing. He'd lost his authority. He'd lost his power. He'd lost his empire. He lost everything. And not only did he lose everything, he was forgotten. Nobody remembered him. Nobody remembered him. And then one day, then one day, God said, right, I'm going to restore you. And suddenly, Nebuchadnezzar was in his right mind. He realized he'd gone crazy. He came back to his senses. <coughs> he, was, he was restored back to his empire. And when he was restored back, if the God why have you suffered for so long God put his foot on your neck to teach you that you are proud and you needed to be humble he put his foot on your neck to realize that you were thought you were something and he was making sure that you realize you are nothing then at his right time today he takes his foot off your neck and he says today your victory has come and it's all to teach you one thing that he is Yahweh that he is the awesome God that he is the God who created everything he is the God of Moses and Isaac and Jacob he is the living God who is alive today awesome in power and you've come to realize what a great awesome god he is that he created everything 
and you can't live in impurity even with little sins and you've realized that your victory today has not come by you it's not come by men it's come by God you turn to Psalm 146 and we'll finish with this Psalm 146 Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Psalm 146. Praise he that I saw. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God. I will have any being. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth, and he returneth to his earth. In that very day his thoughts perish. Happy is he that hath God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, which made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that therein, which keepeth truth forever, which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry, the Lord looseth the prisoners the lord openeth the eyes of the blind the lord raiseth them that are bowed down the lord loveth the righteous the lord preserveth the stranger and he relieved the fatherless of the widow but the way of the wicked he turned upside down the lord shall reign forever even thy god o zion unto all generations praise ye the lord god is teaching you that he is a great god a creator God don't let the negativity of people pull you down God is teaching you today that we're to live a pure life with a pure heart don't play around with sin and God is teaching you today that your victory today that he is giving you is an awesome victory bigger than you could ever dream today but he's done it because he's decided to he's done it because he's a good God and it's time, he's saying to you, it's time that I bless you beyond you could ever imagine. But he's done it to teach you that all the suffering that you went through was to teach you humility and the need to remember that you're nothing and that he is everything. God is a good God and he loves you so much today. He was with you through all your suffering and all your pain. He was with you even in all that you suffered but he is bringing you out of it today he's giving you a new future and a new hope today so be encouraged lift your head up today and praise him and thank him for the victory that he gives you today let's pray <coughs> dear father we thank you that you're our god today we acknowledge we are nothing and we acknowledge we can do nothing. Father, we hand you this day and we give you the praise and the glory and the honor. Father, we love you today. We honor you today. Father, we commit everything to you. We give you the praise and we give you the glory and we adore you today. Father, thank you for the victory that you've given us today, that you promised that you're coming in right now to give us a blessing beyond we could ever hope to contain, a blessing beyond our wildest dreams. And Lord, as you bless us today, we just want to thank you that we're nothing and that you're everything. We want to thank you for your word. We want to thank you for your encouragement. We want to thank you for your love. We want to thank you that you're with us today, that every pain and suffering was not in vain that you were using it so that we could grow stronger in you. <coughs> <coughs> so, Father, we pray. Be with everybody who hears this video today. May it be used to refresh them. May it be used to encourage them. May it be used so that they know your love today and your grace in your name. And
Amen. Thank you for listening and trust that that was a blessing to you. God bless you and uh, may this be a blessing to any of you who listen to it. Thank you for listening and have a lovely evening. This is Jason signing, signing out. Take care and God bless.